I'm Brian Chung, and I'm honored to be with you to discuss Floating, Falling, Flying, a composition made possible through MTNA's Collaborative Music Commissioning Project. This session is entitled From the Pen to the Premiere. And with that creative process in mind, I'll be describing how Floating, Falling, Flying came into being. My initial steps don't normally involve a pen or a pencil. They start in my head, envisioning the kind of composition I want to write. And with this project, several attributes came to mind. The instrumentation was already set. I was commissioned to write for piano, oboe, and violin. The performance level was also predetermined. I was to write a piece for intermediate students or amateur adult players, so the piece needed to be accessible for that level. Except for those two guidelines, the rest was up to me, and I envisioned three additional attributes. First, I wanted the piece to be allegorical. I love writing to images or scenes that I can see or imagine, so this piece would tell a story. Second, I wanted it to be fun. I hoped it might engage younger players by being not only challenging, but also exciting, with a touch of adventure. And lastly, I wanted it to be expressive, able to evoke a range of emotions as the story gradually unfolds. I let those parameters marinate in my brain for a couple weeks, and one day an idea popped out. Balloons. I would compose a story about balloons. Picture this. It's a blustery afternoon. A mother and four-year-old daughter are walking through the park with the daughter holding the strings of two balloons that are tied together. As the mother and daughter reach the top of a hill, a sudden blast of wind engulfs them and yanks the balloons out of the little girl's hand. The balloons float wildly into the air, and a story begins. Have you ever wondered what happens to balloons after they're set free? Floating, Falling, Flying imagines one such scenario. It tells the tale of two balloons who find themselves suddenly and blissfully untethered. And it chronicles their playful, unpredictable, and ultimately perilous journey through the skies, back to Earth, and eventually into the stratosphere. The story is told in three contiguous movements, one for each word in the title. And it features not two, but three characters. The balloons, portrayed by the oboe and violin, and a third character who makes the floating and flying possible, the wind, voiced by the piano. Now, with all these elements in place, it was time to start writing. Here's a shot of my workstation, where I do most of my composing and arranging, usually at night. The piece begins as the balloons escape the little girl's hand and are swept into the sky to float playfully among the clouds. After the introduction, the first movement, called Floating, begins. In the melody, you can hear my way of capturing the lilting quality of floating in the wind. I used melodic lines that were a bit jerky and unpredictable, much like the way wind might behave on a blustery day. You can hear how the phrases move randomly in all directions, like balloons being pushed around by the wind. You may have also noticed the frequent use of appoggiatura in these opening phrases that not only created a fun, whimsical feel, but also helped to portray the tension and release of balloons hitting crosswinds and then surrendering to them as the wind changes direction. Tension and release. Tension, release. In the short bridge section that follows, the piano takes the lead to establish the wind's presence in the story. Mm -hmm. 
While this is playing, the balloons take turns riding on the rolling waves of wind. Soon after, the floating section ends with a cheery exclamation point that says, all is well. But, as in life, journeys are not always fun and peaceful. The second movement, Falling, opens with a hint that something is not quite right. An angry storm is approaching, and the piano plays a series of interesting chords to project a sense of foreboding. I started with this line in mind. But later I wondered, rather than double the notes in the left hand as I'd planned, what if I added notes from the triad one whole step lower? Suddenly they become polychords that sound like this. Can you sense a creepy feeling that something bad is about to happen? I was a bit concerned these chords might be difficult for intermediate players, but ultimately decided from a pedagogical standpoint that it would be valuable for younger pianists to experience these type of chords early in their development. So those polychords remained in the piece. Another interesting thing about this section is that while the storm is approaching, the balloons seem oblivious. They keep prancing around the sky despite the impending danger. When the storm hits several bars later, I wanted the listener to feel the full force of its fury with the piano playing those same foreboding polychords on steroids. At this point, the balloons, tossed violently by the storm, are experiencing such chaos and disorientation that they don't know which way is up. To represent their confusion, I used whole tone scales that have an ambiguous tonal center. Because several whole tone scales share the same notes, you don't always know where they begin and end. This characteristic made them perfect for this moment in the piece. Here's how it all came together. At the end of the falling section, the balloons lie helplessly on the ground, pummeled into submission by the storm. What follows is a transitional section of dialogue between the two exhausted balloons. They ask each other, are you okay? And then slowly roll over to regain their bearings. Valiantly, each one makes an attempt to relaunch. But without wind, their situation seems hopeless. But all is not lost. 
as the wind quietly reappears at the start of the final movement, flying. The excited pair find themselves gradually lifted back up into the air, and their frolicking resumes with even greater joy. And finally, as the piece nears its conclusion, the melodic lines previously harmonized with just two voices to resemble floating are now joined by a third voice, the wind, to represent flying. All three characters speak together with a sprinkling of passionate staccatos to punctuate their celebration as they fly upward into the stratosphere and ultimately out of sight. By the way, the ending I'm about to play is different from the live recording to demonstrate the many ways players can choose to interpret the piece. This ending has the balloons ascending higher and higher as they disappear into the sky. I want to thank Ann Witherspoon, Janice Wenger, violinist Julie Rosenfeld, and oboist Dan Willett for their valuable support and wisdom in the creation of this piece. And I hope many of you who are watching will tell your students about Floating, Falling, Flying, which is available through Trevco Music with this instrumentation and many other instrumental combinations to follow in the weeks to come. Thanks for watching, and thank you, MTNA.